Justin, what was the sort of key to getting over the line in that one? D in the second half, like, I mean, it's 28-28, so our offense wasn't ideal. But, uh, yeah, just being able to con continue to have the habits we wanted at that end of the floor, like, you know, key guys when you can be game winners for them, we did a good job on them. And, you know, I guess down the stretch, just having uh, been able to go to what we wanted to and, and continue to find ways to to get key, key scores at key times. How frustrating was it in the first half when... You guys were shooting it so well, offense was clicking, but the free throws weren't falling, and so it yeah. seemed to sort of like get you guys in the back foot a little bit. Yeah, like we, I felt our offense all night played tired, um, and you know, like the, the game the other night in Cairns was physical, and you know, like it, it definitely took us a bit um, to just get out of the mud, I thought, offensively. Um, but that was a frustration, you know, you get to the line as much as we did, uh, leave 12 points at the, the free throw line there, but equally put them at the foul line the other end and they're making them and it's keeping them in it. So, yeah, something that, you know, we know we'll be better at. It's uncharacteristic for us, but it yeah, will be all right moving forward. Uh, what goes through your head when you have a bunch of weapons but then Isaac hits a few shots and you have a desire to keep him in the game? What goes through your head coaching-wise there? <laughs> I said to him, I benched him in the second by mistake. Uh, I decided I wasn't going to look at the scoreboard with the way the game was going and then totally forgot about uh, you know where the time was at when I wanted to get him in. So, no, it is a, it's a luxury and it's a challenge at times, but we want to just keep having guys in the impact winning. And Isaac impacted winning, especially in the second half there. He did the same role for us in Cairns the other night. Um, you know, Josh Bannon going out late um, with a delayed concussion kind of threw some some different things at us that we weren't really preparing for for this one. Um, DJ comes in, has a great impact in the game. Uh, Sobes' stat line, I think, is actually one of his best all year on four shot attempts. You know, so whether, you know, it's perceived talent or not, like, everyone just came in and, and gave us something today, which was what we needed. Two very close games post-fever break, but two wins. Um, are you kind of comfortable with sort of where you, the trajectory your team is headed in? I'll take wins any day of the week. Um, obviously, we would like to continue to put our foot down and keep being able to, to push scoring margins out, but we know that's coming as well. Um, you know, integrating Shannon back in, having 12 guys for, <laughs> for one game. Uh, hopefully, Bano's back next week, but you know, just finding where our advantages are with the different lineups we can now use is something new for us. So, no, we'll, we'll take a win any day of the week. We know that when we play our best basketball, we can beat anyone in this league. We just got to make sure that's the, the habit and the consistency we can generate moving forward. Uh, what was your take on the win, especially considering back-to-back -back close wins and the sort of feeling that it seemed like it was a very sort of high-octane game? Yeah, I mean, it was fun. It was fun, and uh, obviously the feel at home is a little bit different. Um, our fans are, are really good, and so they get behind us and kind of help us down the stretch. But um, kind of what I take away is, like, something me and Mitch Norton actually talk about a lot is just building the habit of winning. And so kind of what you touched on is, like, we've dropped a couple close ones, and you talk about the trajectory and whatever, but... Um, we're winning the game and that is building a habit um, whether you know it's ugly or not um, and so I like the way we're going it's just being out being able to close the game because we've we've shown that we can put you know at least three really good quarters together but we just haven't been able to finish and now so we've got two under our belt and if we can take that and just keep moving with it. You had a big first quarter followed up by a big fourth quarter did you know sort of right away that you can go out there and impact this game and impact winning? Yeah I mean I always feel like I can. Um, obviously, having been on Illawarra a couple of years back, I have a certain comfort level. I always feel that way against teams I've played for, Tassie included. And so, and also my boy Joel Carlo is an assistant now on Mackay. So I was, my motivation was right up. Um, but to answer your question, like I always feel like I can impact the game um, and help us win. Where has your mind gone, considering the three ball hasn't fallen to the rate that we expect from you this season, but you've been able to still contribute in a fairly productive way this season? Yeah, I mean, it's been tough. Um, you know, it's been something I've continued to work on, just continue to trust my work and it's definitely been a challenge mentally more than anything. Um, but, you know, there's never been any hesitation from, I guess, the staff and my teammates. Um, they always encourage me to shoot the ball. So my focus has just been on, you know, doing the other parts of the game that, that can help win. So that's obviously defence and, um, you know, my penetration has been something when I you know, choose the right spots has actually been really helpful for our team's success. So just been focusing on that and then, you know, the last couple been able to get a couple to fall. So when that picks up, should be good to go. We only look forward, mate. He's 75% this weekend. That's all we care about. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
What, what's it like? Uh, the past few games, it seems like Chris has had his head on the rim a little bit more than usual. What, what does that do to what you guys do offensively? Yeah, no, it's a it's a key on how we we think we can close games out as well as you know he's such a threat on the three point line. We know he's going to have a attachment at that point, but his game off the bounce is is equally as good as his game in the post. So he's he's got multiple ways he can uh, can have effect for us. Um, what we want is multiple people to be able to get feet in the paint. Uh, we know you know this weekend we've shot the three ball around 40 percent, and we identified that in the window that you know paint touch to out is very good for us, and he's one of those guys that can generate that for us as is Isaac, as is Sob. So continue to find those those advantages for him is is a key for us. You had an interesting sort of rotation with the bigs, foul trouble and things like that. Someone like Rocco, when he gets in, what's the sort of thing that, that you want him to do out there? What, what are you challenging him to do? Yeah, like winning habits as in, you know, take care of his communication in the ball screens level one for him, rim protect for us, secure the rebounds. Like when he's doing those three things, he's really effective at the defensive end. And then offensively, can he get us extra possessions? Um, he's a, such a lob threat towards the rim. And, you know, we knew we could have advantage in the ball screen. So yeah, he had a rough patch at the back end, but again, like his first in, he impacted winning for us. And, you know, he's had a pretty <coughs> solid weekend for us. Uh, can you give us an idea of what you think this bullets, this, this ceiling is for this team? Had a, a, a full squad and then tonight was full mm. except for, for Bannon, but it seems like you guys are building some sort of chemistry. It feels like the tra trajectory is forward. What do you see the ceiling of this team as? I mean, the way to answer that is that I've never gone into a game feeling like we'd lose it, to be honest with you. Like, I think um, on paper, we're just as talented as anyone, and obviously I believe in what we do day to day and habits wise and stuff like that. So I mean I guess our ceiling is is championship but um, you know that's well that's one game at a time. But yeah, I mean there hasn't been one where I've been like, oh yeah, we're in trouble here. I'm sure you're locked in every game, but what's it like former team and then obviously Joel Carlo on the bench as well, mm. the NBA one North mm. What's it what's it like? Obviously you just you're seeing familiar faces on yeah. the other end. It's just fun, to be honest. Uh, it's pretty funny. Every time I sub in greet is doing all sorts at me when I go check in so that's kind of funny and then yeah as I said just a little bit of extra pep in my step a little flex at Joel Carlu when I give him a bucket just because we've been talking trash all week but it's always fun as I said going against familiar faces and it probably you know makes me a little more comfortable if anything. Uh, is Mitch Norton okay? Yeah he caught one downstairs okay. um, so yeah nothing long term um, well hopefully for his and his wife's sake but uh, no he'll be fine next week. <laughs> I'll just be quick, Olgan's covered most of it, but um, Justin, wanted to touch on Tyrell Harrison. I mean, we've talked all season about how good he's playing, but he looks so confident now to be able to make plays offensively, but then I don't think you would prefer anyone in the league in that position on that last play defensively to, to make the play, play that you did. Yeah, I've got a couple others that I don't mind in that spot either, in the, the five <laughs> spot, but uh, no, he, like, to his own standard, he wasn't at the level to start the game and um, let a couple drop, missed his free throws, and he was frustrated. But to come back in and have the impact he, he had, and you know, we, we sort of targeted the post when um, Froling had foul trouble, and Tyrell was a big big advantage for us there. And you know, I think you know it's it's eyes are everyone across the the board. Like we've got guys that understand what they need to do to impact winning for us. And you know, I think Tyrell's just been given that uh, freedom to be able to do his job day in, day out, and we're, we're happy with what we're seeing. Can you just expand on what you mentioned about Sobs earlier? Because we know how good of a scorer he can be, but he's a guy that had a huge impact on you winning this game, and he only took four shots. I mean, he's a captain, and he's, he's proving why he's becoming such a mature leader now as well. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, I think... It's easily forgotten that, you know, Sobes has had to do a lot in the last few years at this club to just try and keep the club in games. And what we've worked with him on is understanding what winning can look like when he doesn't have to be the only one scoring. And I look at six assists tonight, it's outstanding by him. Um, you know, seven rebounds, he gets eight points. Like, that sort of stat line is going to put us in a winning position every night. There's going to be games where we need him to, to go get 30 for us as well. But, you know, what we love is the depth of talent that we have. Um, I'm not sure other people in the league believe in it as much as what we do and that's something that I've got to continue to trust and you know there hasn't been a loss this year where I'm not kicking myself for not trusting our bench more so you know that's that's a strength Sobes has a, been an outstanding leader for us and um, you know whatever push we make towards the playoffs he's going to be a big part of it
And just lastly, heading back to Melbourne for you next week. Is it a, a good or bad thing to catch catch Dean after a loss loss earlier today? Uh, yeah, no, the that club hasn't lost two in a row. Um, I want to find the stat because we were about making our own history and and trying to put ourselves in positions to do something new. And um, you know, for us, it's about. They, they touched us up last time down there and out of every club in this league, it's the only one that we probably didn't feel like we've had our uh, met the standard or, or been at the same level as them yet. Um, but I say yet because we're a different side now and you know we, we definitely are looking forward to going into there. We know that it's going to be a tough night. Um, they're an exceptional team, uh, well prepared and you know it's about us just continuing to grow and, and put ourselves in a position where hopefully we can get one on the road. Thanks, mate. I'm Oren Rocco, he, he did have a tough game today, but we were watching him on the bench. He's living every point for your squad. What does that tell you about him as a person and, and his attitude? Yeah, no, that's, I think that's something we're trying to have is what winning looks like in this club is it's not about us as individuals, it's us collectively. And um, that's why we know he's going to be great because he can have enough humility that when it's not his go, he's going to cheer Baines, he's going to cheer Tyrell on just as hard as they do for him. And I think that's a strength in that position for us is, you know, we talk about winning our, our position on the night and that's who your teammate is that needs to win that position as well. So, you know, they're lucky and fortunate to have each other in that in that space.